Hello everyone, today we will discuss about the extra features of the medulla oblongata. So what is medulla oblongata? It's a part of the brain stem. The brain stem actually is divided into three parts. The upper part is known as midbrain. As you can see here, it is connecting to the cerebrum. So it connects the brain stem to the cerebrum. The middle and the widest part of the brain stem is known as the pons. This part connects via middle cerebellar peduncle to the cerebellum. Lower part is known as medulla oblongata which continues as spinal cord at the level of the foramen magnum. So this is what is the medulla oblongata which ultimately it's a pyramidal in shape. It continues as spinal cord at foramen magnum and it's a lower part of the brain stem. What we will see in the medulla oblongata? We will discuss medulla oblongata in two surfaces. The anterior surface or the anterior view and the posterior surface, posterior view. Anterior surface of the medulla oblongata, what we will see is the different features. The feature which is in the center, which is known as anterior median fissure. As you can see in this particular diagram, anterior median fissure is in the midline and is a continuation of the same fissure of the spinal cord. So, if you see in the upper part, this particular fissure ends as a foramen cecum. Foramen means opening, but it is not an opening here, it is blind. So that's why it's known as cecum, foramen cecum, cecum means blind. So foramen cecum is nothing but a blind foramen at the upper end of the anterior median fissure. In the lower part, this fissure is disrupted by the crossing fibers of the pyramidal tract which is known as pyramidal decussation. What is pyramidal decussation? It is, the fiber, it is the crossing of the fibers of the pyramidal tract or the corticospinal tract. Majority of the fibers of corticospinal tract crosses at the level of the uh, pyramidal decussation. So the, that's why pyramidal tract is a crossed corticospinal tract. So, so mostly 75 80 percent fibers crosses at the level of the pyramidal decussation and it disrupts the uh, anterior median fissure. Later to the anterior median fissure, you will see a elevation known as pyramid. This particular pyramid is actually raised by the underlying corticospinal tract which is known as the pyramidal tract and that's why the name pyramid, not because of the shape, because of the underlying fibers, name of the fibers which is below this particular elevation. Later to this pyramid, there is a elevation known as olive. It is an old shaped elevation and this particular elevation is raised by the inferior uh, olivary nucleus. So olive olivary nucleus. So this is the inferior olivary nucleus which is underlying this particular olive. So olive is elevation raised by inferior olivary nucleus. It is one of the motor accessory motor nucleus. Still later to the olive we will have uh, another bundle of fibers which is known as the inferior cerebellar peduncle. What is peduncle? It is the bundle of fibers and cerebellar means it is connecting to the cerebellum. So these are the fibers which connects the medulla oblongata to the cerebellum. This contains the fibers coming from the spinal cord. So this is what is about the features seen on anterior surface like median fissure, we have pyramidal decussation, pyramid, olive and the inferior cerebellar peduncle. Now we are coming to the nerves which are uh, emerging from medulla oblongata. We take one by one them. The first one here is the abducens nerve which is at the pontomedullary junction which is very close to the pyramid as you can see here. So it is close to the pyramid and it is at the pontomedullary junction between pons and medulla oblongata. So it is the medial most nerve in the junction of the pons and medulla oblongata. From medial to lateral, there is a facial nerve which is lateral to the abducens nerve and still lateral is a vestibulocochlear nerve. So, we have arrangement from medial to lateral. The first one is abducens nerve, second is the facial nerve, that is the, the seventh cranial nerve, eighth cranial nerve is the vestibulocochlear which is lateral. Behind the olive, you will see the cranial nerves above downwards. The first one which is originating is the glossopharyngeal nerve, which is the ninth cranial nerve. Below it is the vagus which is the 10th cranial nerve and still below is the cranial part of accessory nerve that is 11th cranial so 9 that is glossopharyngeal, the 10th that is the vagus and the 11th that is the cranial part of accessory nerve which is the originating behind the olive. 
Between the olive and the pyramid, we have a hypoglossal nerve. Behind the olive, 9, 10, 11. Between olive and the pyramid, hypoglossal nerve. So, hypoglossal is in front. So, this is what is the cranial nerve, which is number 12, supplying the muscles of the tongue. So, what we know is we have seen abdicin nerve, facial and vestibular cochlear nerve. They are at pontomedullary junction from medial to lateral and then behind the olive we have seen 9, 10 and 11 that is glossopharyngeal vagus and cranial part of uh, accessory nerve and between olive and the pyramid we have seen the hypoglossal nerve which is the 12th cranial nerve. So these are the nerves which are emerging from the medulla oblongata. In a clinical practice we should know that this particular nerves are originating of, uh, from different parts of the brainstem. So now here these nerves are originating from the uh, medulla oblongata. Now coming to the posterior surface, it is divided into the open part and the closed part of medulla oblongata. The open part of the medulla oblongata is the one which is opening to the floor of fourth ventricle. So it is related to the floor of fourth ventricle. While closed part is the one which encloses the central canal, same like the uh, spinal cord. So open part is nothing but the floor of the fourth ventricle, lower part of the floor of the fourth ventricle. While the closed part is the one which encloses the central canal. In the open part, we have two important triangles. The first is the vagal triangle. Where is it? It is paramedian, but it is laterally placed. And if you see the apex of this triangle, which is pointing upwards. If you see the actual cadaveric specimen, it looks purple in color. So it's dark in color. And deep to this triangle, we have a dorsal nucleus of the vagus. Dorsal nucleus of vagus is a cardiorespiratory center. The cardiorespiratory center is vital center because it controls the heart and respiration. So if anything goes wrong with this particular area, that means the dorsal nucleus of vagus, which is the largest parasympathetic nucleus, it will be damaged, it will lead to the death. So this is what is importance of dorsal nucleus of vagus. Hypoglossal triangle is medial to the vagal triangle and it is pale, apex is pointing downwards and deep to this particular area we have a hypoglossal nucleus. So deep to the hypoglossal triangle we have a hypoglossal nucleus which supplies the muscles of the tongue. So this is what is about the two important areas in the open part of the medulla oblongata in the posterior surface, the vagal triangle which is later pale, uh, sorry, dark, uh, dark purple and deep to is, is the dorsal nucleus of vagus, hypoglossal, medial, uh, pale and deep to it is the hypoglossal nucleus. Now coming to the closed part, in the closed part we have in the center posterior median sulcus. So posterior median sulcus is same continuation of the posterior median sulcus of the spinal cord. Later to this particular posterior median circus, we have the tractus gracilis and tractus cuneatus. So they are nothing but the tracts and they are the tracts of the posterior column fibers. Okay, so tractus gracilis and tractus cuneatus in physiology they are called as tract of gold and burda. They ultimately are located later to median fissure and when they go up, they end at the elevation which is known as gracile tubercle and cuneate tubercle. The gracile tubercle is the medial one and the cuneate tubercle is the lateral one. These particular two tubercles are raised because of the underlying nucleus. The gracile nucleus and the cuneate nucleus. The gracile and cuneate nucleus are nothing but the relaxation of the posterior column fibers. Posterior column fibers are responsible for the tactile discrimination vibration and conscious joint position. So these are the three sensations carried by the posterior column fibers that is tractus gracilis and tractus cuneatus. So posterior column fibers are responsible for mainly tactile discrimination, vibration, conscious joint position. Later to this we have inferior cerebellar peduncle which we have already seen which is seen in the anterior surface also, it can be seen on the lateral surface also and it can be seen on posterior surface also. So this is one of the bundle of fibers which will be seen all around and the it, this one connects the medulla oblongata to the cerebellum. Now let's recap before uh, ending this particular session summary that what we have seen the, in the features on the anterior surface, we have seen the anterior median fissure, we have seen the foramen cecum at the upper end of anterior median fissure, in the lower part we have seen the pyramidal decussation, 
which is crossing of fibers of corticospinal tract, imaginative fibers crosses here. Later to the median fissure, we see the pyramid, which is an elevation raised by corticospinal tract or pyramidal tract. Later to the pyramid, we have an oval shaped elevation known as olive, and still laterally, we have an inferior cerebellar peduncle. So, these are the features we have seen on the anterior surface of the medulla oblongata. Nerves coming out from medulla oblongata between pont medulation is the abducens, that is sixth facial seventh and vestibular cochlear eighth. So these are the nerves at the pontomedullary junction. Behind the olive we have the ninth, tenth and eleventh that is the glossopharyngeal vagus and the cranial part of accessory that is the eleventh cranial nerve. So nine, ten and eleven are originating behind the olive and between the olive and pyramid we have, uh, we have the hypoglossal nerve. On the posterior surface, we have seen closed part and the open part, closed is lower, open is upper part. Open part is for fourth, of it, fourth ventricle and lower part is enclosing the central canal. What we see in the open part, two triangles, vagal triangle and hypoglossal triangle. So these are the two important triangles. We have seen the tractus gracilis ending at tractus, uh, cuneate tubercle, tractus gracilis ending at the cuneate tubercle and laterally the inferior cerebellar peduncle. You can refer to this clinical snail's neuroanatomy and uh, at last for the pictures. Thank you very much for today.